Recently I've been looking into different ways to make a sniper scope, or any scope for that matter. I was inspired by a video by Garbage and a response by Mysterious Purple Cat. Got me thinking of how to actually implement this on my own project and other options available out there. Here's a hint. Most of these are actually very simple to do with one or two lines of code. The rest can be controlled by an animation player. You just need to know what to do. I've gone and made three basic prototypes of a sniper to show how these work in the Godot game engine. The first is a simple overlay type, very similar to what you might see in older games like Counter-Strike. The second is a more visually demanding one, where we render the entire scene to the lens as a render texture, but with a zoomed in camera. And the third is where we zoom the main camera and then use an optical illusion to prevent any perspective issue on the weapon that we're zooming on. If you don't already have a gun model or anything set up for this, I have a tutorial on that, which I will link below. Likewise, these scope techniques rely on using a viewport container for your view model, i.e. the sniper, which I also have a tutorial on. So I'm assuming you have a gun that can shoot of some kind and a view model set up. I'm using Quaternius' sniper model, which I will link to you below. And you can also download this project on itch.io. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. I'm going to start with the basic code and the basic animation and then move on to the detail of each technique. So you can watch this first part and skip to wherever you want after that. Hopefully that's helpful. Add an animation player and create a new animation called Zoom and make it 0.1 second long. Create a track and move your sniper to the center. This is easy for me because the sniper's origin is set to zero on the lens, so I just need to move my weapon container back to zero. And that's all we'll do for now. In your player script, create a variable and call it something like zoomed and set it to false. Create a variable using onReadyVar to get access to your animation player, if you haven't done that already. Add a function to your script called zoom and check to see if our variable is false. If it is, we'll play our animation to zoom our sniper, else it means that zoom is true and we should play our zoom animation backwards. Then, at the end, we should change our variable zoomed to be the opposite of whatever it was before the check. If you don't already have an input, add one under Project, Settings, Input Map, and Add an input called right underscore click and map that to your mouse's right click button. I've already got this in my project, but I'll repeat here, just in case. If you haven't already, add the underscore input function to your script. This is the same as ready and process. It's built in. Then call event.isActionPressed, right click, and event is action released, right click, and add the zoom function to both, if true. You can also do this in the process function with is action just pressed. It's mostly a preference for me. Doing that would be more of a click on, click off kind of zoom action rather than a click and release. If we jump out of our script and run the game, we'll see that the animation plays if we press the right click on the mouse. And that's all there is for the code here. Uh, let's go ahead and add the overlay first. The first thing you'll need is an overlay of some type at a semi-decent resolution. I made mine in GIMP with a black background and a circle eraser. It can be found in this project with a few different resolutions. These can be found in Sniper, Overlay Folder. If you haven't already, create a canvas layer, add a control node and call it HUD. I've already got one, but I'll repeat again just in case and then add a text direct and call it zoom overlay. I recommend to place it at the top position. This way, if you have other information like ammo and health, they will still be displayed over these. Also, remember to choose full rect in the layouts and check the box expand so that your overlay will work at any resolution and then drag and drop any overlay you like. Under the visibility of your zoom overlay, Look for the modulate setting and change it to fully alpha so that the overlay disappears. Then create a track to fade in the overlay. Next, we want to modulate the ViewModel's viewport container to fade away. 
This is so the gun isn't visible when we're zoomed. Once again, in order to achieve this, you need to be using a viewport container. And finally, the thing we actually need to zoom, create a track on your main camera to decrease the field of view from whatever it is normally to something smaller. My normal FOV is 70, that's the default, and I'm decreasing it to 20. Play around until you feel you have a seamless transition. And that should be it. Jump into the project and test it out. I really like this method. It's fairly easy and effective at communicating the point. There's also a lot of flexibility with adding a 2D overlay. It can be anything you like. I haven't got any camera shake on this controller, so there's no recoil like in the example from the start. Maybe I'll do that next video. So let's start working on the picture in picture style. This is the most demanding for a computer as we're going to render the world twice, one for the main camera and another for the sniper lens. This is a mesh that we'll render a viewport texture to. This is linked to a zoom camera at the end of our sniper. If you don't know how to add a render texture to a mesh, I have an entire video series on that linked below. You'll need a lens to render the texture to. I've tried adding a standard cylinder mesh, but it didn't work very well. So it's best to either export it with your model or add a cylinder from Blender that has been properly unwrapped, meaning whatever surface you intend to display the viewport on will need to take up most of the UV surface. I've changed the default model from Quaternius's pack on itch.io to suit this project. So if you're not sure how to do this, just download this project. You'll need to add another viewport to your gun. Set the resolution to something small and square. I'm using 500 by 500. This is about the smallest I think you can get away with without the render texture looking pixelated. Make sure to tick make 3D linear and under the render target, click V flip. Then add a camera and call it zoom camera. I moved my camera around because I thought it would be a good place to show the viewport being displayed, forgetting I had to code the camera first. Make sure to set the field of view to something low, like 20 or 30. I'll go with 20. Next, add a position 3D and call it something like camera position or camera pause. I have a base rotation in my model, so I need to have the reverse of this in my position 3D for it to work, but you may not need that. Next, add a script to your gun. Create variables for both the position 3D and the camera. And in the process function, make the camera's global transform equal the position 3Ds. This is because the camera will not move with the character when in a viewport, even when parented. Looks like I forgot to name my position 3D, so I'll do that now. Uh, I've always found this little piece of code a little bit tedious when working with viewport cameras. I wonder if there's a faster way to do this. Next, add a new spatial material to your lens. Check unshaded and local to scene. Then under albedo, choose viewport texture and add the viewport we just created. You should see your viewport now display on your lens. If not, I recommend checking your UV coordinates. That's normally the issue for me. If you don't want to see the barrel of the sniper in your lens, you can easily remove that by either moving the camera's position 3D to the end of the gun, or by eliminating the coal mask layer that your gun sits on, which is what I will do. Back in our animation player, we'll need to go back to our animation called Zoom. If you've got the other animation on here, we really only need the weapon movement. The rest you can remove. Otherwise, add a track to move the animation to the center of the screen. You may need to bring the scope closer to the screen. That's all you really need, however. We can do a few more things to make this look better. Firstly, we can animate the visibility of the shader lens. Change the albedo color to completely alpha and then tick alpha scissor and slide to one. The lens should completely disappear. Key that to the start of our animation and then key zero for the end. This is kind of a performance thing and kind of an aesthetic thing as I'm not a big fan of being able to see the zoom lens all the time. It's totally optional though. Then we can add some depth of field blur to the main camera so that things outside the lens are blurred in the distance. I think this really grounds the technique and gives it a real sense of immersion. Add an environment to your main camera. If your camera doesn't have one, you can simply add the default environment and scroll down until you find the depth of field far blur. Enable it and find a setting you like.
then set the amount to zero and key that to a track in your animation. And then at the end of your animation, increase the blur. Now when you run the game, your render texture should not be visible when you aren't zooming and the view outside the lens should have a nice blur. And I almost forgot, you need to change the albedo on the lens from alpha to fully colored for the alpha scissor to work. Otherwise we'll just see straight through it. So make sure you add that in. Um, definitely don't miss that step, otherwise you'll be very confused. And there we have it. I did experiment with using transparency in the shader, but I found that there's a little bit of a lag hitch when you tick on and off transparent in the shader, and I didn't like that very much. And I found Alpha Scissor works a lot better, albeit you need a couple of extra tracks. So now let's look at the FOV option for a scope. This one is good for all types of weapons. You can use it for aim down sights for pretty much any gun. The first thing we need to do is remove the lens from the scope so that we can see all the way through, then remove all the animation tracks if you have them from the previous two demonstrations, except for moving the scope to the center and just hit play. Just to show you the issue, why we're going to do these things, you'll see the scope obscures a large amount of the screen and doesn't resemble the other two and looks nothing like you see in modern games. What you can do is add a track to change the FOV of the view model camera so that it's almost totally flat, somewhere around two to five. Don't forget, we also need to key a track for the main camera to zoom. I'm going to go with an FOV of 20. This will either bring the sniper too close or through the camera completely. Let's just run the game to get a sense of what we're working with. And it looks like we're right up against that lens mesh. Uh, the sight seems to be a little off center too, but I'm sure that difference is not material as we say in the industry. So we move the gun further away. You'll have to play with it a bit, but if you're using my project, negative 3.5 is what works. And that's not really all there is to this one. You might add a blur overlay. You can't use depth of field blur because in this case, we're essentially just looking straight through the camera. So I've added a blur shader here. This is a simple circle shader with an alpha blur. It looks pretty good, but there may be better shaders out there. I'll leave this on the screen for a second if you want to copy it down. And I'll just quickly animate the blur levels so that it's only blurry when we're aiming down the sides. And I'm happy with that. And so that's the three different ways to do the sniper scope. Personally, I prefer the overlay, especially for long range weapons and for smaller weapons, I might use the field of view. I don't necessarily like picture in picture because in Godot, there are some tricky little things going on with um, adding these uh, viewport textures that sometimes lead to hitches. Um, you might not have seen them in this particular project, but I'll display something on screen now that shows you some weirdness that I was experiencing when I was trying to figure this out. So it's not perfect, and that's why I sort of avoid using that. Field of view is good, but, but when you move the gun further away, um, you might notice that the shadow is actually a lot further down the line. So there are some other problems with that as well. Um, I'll keep exploring. If I find anything new, I'll make another video. Or if you guys know some secrets, post down below and let me know. I posted all three of these to Twitter and it seems like there was a pretty even split to what people preferred. So I think you should just go with whatever suits your project. I'm Isaac and I'm Chef Dev and I'll see you next time.